We're now going to talk about how to calculate the length of a parametrized curve. So suppose it's given in the form x equals f of t, y equals g of t, where t goes from alpha to beta. Then the length is given by the formula integral from alpha to beta of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. So I'm assuming here that x and y are differentiable functions of t, otherwise this formula doesn't make sense. So what's the intuition behind this formula? Well, the idea is that as we're moving along this curve, at any given time, we have a velocity vector. Now, we'll be talking more about vectors a little bit later. So if you haven't seen vectors before, and you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about this. But for those of you who have seen this, in case it helps, the velocity vector has an x component, which is x prime of t, and a y component, which is y prime of t. So the length of this velocity vector by the Pythagorean theorem is the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. So this integrand is the length of the velocity vector. which you could also call speed. So what this formula says is that the length is, that is the total distance you've gone, is the integral of speed over time. Okay, so that hopefully makes some intuitive sense, but now let's justify this formula. And to justify this formula, I need an actual definition of length. So let's do that on the next page. So to define length, what we're going to do is we're going to approximate our curve by a bunch of short line segments, like this. We're going to add up the lengths of all these line segments, and we're going to take the limit as the lengths of the line segments go to zero. So more precisely, we're going to take the interval from alpha to beta and divide it into n parts. So these n parts will be set off by numbers t0, t1, up to tn, where t0 is the left endpoint alpha and tn is the right endpoint beta. And we might as well make the distances between them equal. So we'll let delta t which is ti minus ti minus 1, equal beta minus alpha over n. And then we're going to define L to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of the length of the line segment from the point x of ti minus 1, comma y of ti minus 1, to the point x of ti, comma y of ti. Okay, so one of our line statements looks like this. So here's the point x of ti minus 1, y of ti minus 1, and here's the point x of ti, y of ti. Now what's the length of this line segment? Well, there's some amount we go in the x direction. Let's call this delta x, i. And some amount we go in the y direction. Let's call this delta y, i. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of sum from i equals 1 to n square root of delta xi squared 
plus delta y i squared. And one can prove that if x and y are differentiable functions of t, then this limit exists. Now, to show that this equals the integral we had from before, we note that when delta t is small, then delta xi is approximately x prime of t times delta t. Because what is x prime of t? It's the limit as delta t goes to 0 of delta xi over delta t. And likewise, delta yi is approximately y prime of t times delta t. So you can show that in the limit you're going to get the same thing if you write this using these equations as um, delta t times square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. And then this limit, by definition, is the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Okay, so this is my actual definition of length. That's the definition. And then by working out what this means, we find that it's equal to the integral I wrote before. Okay, let's calculate a couple of examples of length. For example, let's find the length of the unit circle x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Of course, we already know the answer, but let's do it again this way and make sure we get it right. So the length is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Now what is x prime? x prime is minus sine t. So I have a minus sine t here, and I square it. And y prime is cosine t. So I have a cosine t here, and I square that. Now what do I have in the square root? Well, this is sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is 1. So I have the square root of 1 dt. Now whenever I write a square root, I always mean the positive square root. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 dt, which is 2 pi. So when you calculate lengths, be careful to take the positive square root, otherwise you get the wrong answer. If you calculate the length of something and you get a negative number, then something went wrong because lengths are never negative. So then you have to go back and debug and see what went wrong. All right. Now, it's an important fact that the length of a curve does not depend on the parameterization. As long as you don't cover the same part of the curve more than once. So remember my slogan that a parameterized curve is a curve plus a parameterization. So if you just have some curve in the plane, you want to find its length, you can choose any parameterization you like, as long as you cover each part of the curve exactly once. And then, no matter which such parameterization you choose, this integral will always give the same answer. Now you're not allowed to do something like this, where you say start along the curve going this way, and then turn around and go back for a while, and then continue and go around like that. Because then you'll have covered part of the curve more than once, and the length will be too big. For example, for the unit circle, what if I keep these formulas for x and y, but now allow t to go from 0 to 4 pi? Well, then in this calculation, this 2 pi will change to a 4 pi, and I'll get a length of 4 pi, which is twice the correct answer. And that's wrong, because if t goes from 0 to 4 pi, then you're going around the circle twice. 
Now let's look at another example. What if I take x equals cosine 3t and y equals sine 3t, but to make sure I go around the circle exactly once, I'll have t now go from 0 to 2 pi over 3. Let's calculate the length this way using this parameterization and check that we get the same answer. So the length is the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3 of the square root of x prime of t. So x prime of t is minus 3 sine 3t. Three and y prime of t is 3 cosine of 3t. dt. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3 of the square root of what? Well, this term is 9 sine squared 3t, and this term is 9 cosine squared 3t. So since sine squared 3t plus cosine squared 3t is 1, I have the square root of 9 dt. And since I always take the positive square root of the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3 of 3 dt, which is 3 times 2 pi over 3, which is still 2 pi. So if you think of length as the integral of speed with respect to time, then with the first parameterization, we're moving at unit speed for time 2 pi. And with the second parameterization, we're moving at a constant speed of 3 for time 2 pi over 3. All right, let's do one more example. Now let's calculate the length of the asteroid x equals cosine cubed t, y equals sine cubed t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So the length is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. So that's the integral of the square root of, so x prime is minus 3 cosine squared t sine t, and y prime is 3 sine squared t cosine t. Okay, so let's expand this out. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 9 cosine to the fourth t sine squared t plus 9 sine to the fourth t cosine squared t. So that's, if I factor out the square root a little bit, it's 9 sine squared t cosine squared t times cosine squared over here and sine squared over there. And since cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, that's the whole thing. So it's the square root of 9 sine squared t cosine squared t dt. Okay. Now, at this point, one needs to be careful. There's a little trap you can fall into. So let's just carelessly proceed ahead. I'm going to fall right into the trap and watch what happens to me. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi. So I just take the square root here, and I get 3 sine t cosine t dt. And the antiderivative of this is um, 3 halves sine squared t. And then I evaluate this at 2 pi and 0. Now sine of 2 pi and sine of 0 are both 0, so I get 0. Uh-oh. Remember the length is supposed to be positive. I mean the length can be 0 if your curve is a constant curve and not going anywhere. Otherwise, the length is always going to be positive. So I did something wrong here. What happened? Well, the problem is, remember that we have to take the positive square root. So here I just took the square root of this, and I wrote 3 sine t cosine t. Now, sometimes sine t cosine t is positive, and sometimes it's negative. And it turns out that it's exactly half the time of each, and they cancel out, and that's why I got 0. So this was wrong. So how do I do this correctly? Well, you could split the integral into pieces, some of which where this is positive and some are negative. But a simpler way is to use symmetry. So remember that 
the asteroid has a fourfold symmetry. It looks sort of like this. Though that came out really lopsided. Anyway, so by symmetry, I can just integrate from 0 to pi over 2 and multiply by 4. Now, in between 0 and pi over 2, sine and cosine are both positive, or, or 0 at the ends. So now I can just do what I did before, and it will be correct. So I can write 4 integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 3 sine t cosine t dt. So this is 6 sine squared t evaluated at t equals pi over 2, and t equals 0. And at t equals pi over 2, sine t is 1, at t equals 0, it's 0, so I get 6. That's the final answer. You might think that it would, it would have to have some pi in it somewhere, but it doesn't. It's just 6. All right, so that's the end of our discussion of calculating the lengths of parametrized curves.